Hello everyone, welcome to Gizmo China. A few weeks ago, we made a review video about the latest Huawei flagship, the Huawei Mate 40 Pro, which is powered by the Kirin 9000 chipset. At that time, we couldn't really assess its true performance potential due to the software limits. But today, we are going to specifically talk about its performance. So let's check out whether the Kirin 9000 is the most powerful Android chipset in the market right now. Before we start the test, let's see what's special about the chip. Due to the ban against Huawei, the Kirin 9000 chipset may be the last product in the Kirin series. It's the first chipset for Android built on a 5 nanometer process. Like the Kirin 990 released last year, the CPU of the Kirin 9000 doesn't apply the technology of the latest ARM cores, but still focuses on optimizing the existing cores. The CPU part consists of a main Cortex A77 core running up to 3.13 GHz. Three more middle A77 cores clocked at 2.54 GHz and four more small A55 cores running at 2.05 GHz. To be honest, as a compact CPU serving smartphones, the frequency of the main core is pretty amazing. But what's more surprising is the GPU part. It's powered by ARM's latest G78 GPU architecture and the number of GPU cores is up to 24, which is also the maximum permissible size for Mali GPU. And it's not over yet. The 24 GPU cores can amazingly run up to 759 MHz. The number of transistors in the new Kirin 9000 chipset is 30% more than Apple's latest A14 chipset. So at least from all the specs we've mentioned here, we have to admit that Huawei really shows its great ambition and great development capability in this Kirin 9000 processor. And we know making chips isn't easy, right? After all, Samsung is yet to perfect its own Exynos lineup. First, let's check out its benchmark performance. For CPU performance, let's look at the results of Geekbench 5. We can see that as compared to both Snapdragon 865 and 865 Plus, the Kirin 9000 took the lead in single core and multi core performance. Especially in the multi core performance segment, the gap is more pronounced. Huawei's new processor scored 13% higher than the Legion Pro powered by the 865 Plus. Well, about its GPU performance, let's check out the 3D Mark's results. Thanks to the highest specs of the ARM G78, the Kirin 9000's GPU performance is significantly ahead of the existing Android phones, and it's the first Android phone that is arguably close to the performance of the iPhone yet. So far, the Kirin 9000 seems perfect with all the performance results, but we have to mention that all the results were run under peak output in a short time period. While there's no doubt that the monster-like specs of the Kirin 9000 will provide excellent performance that we've never seen on Android phones, we still were worried whether it's sufficient in departments like power consumption and heating when it runs for a longer period of time. So we selected Genshin Impact to do a power consumption test for the Kirin 9000. To assess its highest performance, we turned on the performance mode from the battery settings, and then we ran the game under its highest graphic settings for 30 minutes. The whole gaming experience was amazingly smooth. And notably, this was the first time that an Android phone could stably run the game at 60 FPS without remarkable fluctuation. But what we were initially concerned about was its power output. The maximum power reaches at around 8.6 watts, but most of the time the average output remained around 5.35 watts. And turns out the power consumption is not really high for such performance since we got relatively high output at 7.9 watts for the Snapdragon 865 Plus running the same game. But we also realized that Genshin Impact did not trigger the full performance of the Kirin 9000. So we turned to another game, Nimian Legend. In this game, the CPU usage was pretty high throughout and the main core could run at the highest frequency at 3.13 GHz. And this time, the average output for CPU could go up to 7.44 watts. But even in this game, the Snapdragon 865 Plus still consumed more power. The average power output even reached 8.7 watts. In addition, if we look back at the comparison between Kirin 990, the last flagship Huawei chipset, and the Kirin 9000, Huawei has also achieved a remarkable improvement in its gaming performance. For example, in the test running the game Nimium Legend, the frame rate for the Kirin 9000 has remarkably improved from 48 FPS to 62.6 FPS, which is an amazing 30% improvement. And thanks to the 144Hz display equipped on the Lenovo Legion phone, the running frame rate went up to 75.29 FPS, with the highest 144 FPS limit, while the 90Hz display on the Mate 40 Pro actually limited the Kirin 9000's play around the same figure as the frame rate. We know that those games powered by the Snapdragon 865 Plus are pretty easy to heat up in the performance mode, so most of them adapted a conservative strategy for gamers when it came to its peak performance, and some even required extra cooling tools, such as the ROG Phone 3. Does the powerful Mate 40 Pro have the same heating issues during gaming? The fact is that the Mate 40 Pro doesn't turn on the performance mode by default, but users can switch it on in the battery settings to unleash its maximum performance but at the same time, it also increased the temperature and power consumption. 
and all of our following tests were done under the performance mode. After running the Nimian Legend for 30 minutes, although it heated up a bit, the Mate 40 Pro maintained a stable surface temperature at around 42 to 46 degrees Celsius. While the Xiaomi Mi 10 running the Snapdragon 865 had a slightly better cooling effect and its surface only got heated up to around 44 degrees Celsius. And surprisingly, the Legion phone could not effectively control heat when we switched on the performance mode. The display temperature even reached up to 57 degrees Celsius. So considering the outstanding performance that we had on the Mate 40 Pro, the cooling efficiency is quite impressive. In the other games such as PUBG Mobile, the Mate 40 Pro looks effortless to achieve a super fluent experience under the highest graphic settings. So we are not going to show you more specific results over these games. So that's our take on the Kirin SoC from Huawei. So far, the Kirin 9000 is definitely worthy of its title of the most powerful 2020 Android chipset, which even increases our anticipation of the performance of the upcoming Snapdragon 875. But it's still too early to talk about the 875 chipset, as it probably won't be mass produced until January next year. If the Kirin 9000 was the last product of the Kirin series, trust me, the market would become much more boring. It will definitely be a great loss to the industry. So what do you think of the Kirin 9000? Please tell us your thoughts and leave your comments down below. If you like the video, kindly click the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. It would mean a lot to us. Thanks for watching. This is Kieran from Gizmo China and we'll see you soon.